Hey guys, it's Emma from Paint Pony Studios, and we just wanted to do a little bit of a video about what you can do with your models while you're still at home, um, while all these live shows are getting canceled. There's still a lot of stuff that you can do with your briars, your stones, your copper fox, with any kind of brand of model horse that you have while you're at your home. So one of the one of the first things that we're going to talk about is bathing your models. I'm not actually all my guys have just gotten cleaned. Um, but I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about how to bathe your models. So you're going to want to use a really, really soft soap, a really, really mild soap, like a body wash, um, moisture, sensitive skin, kind of a body wash. You don't want to rub off any paint. And also a nice soft washcloth. This one may actually be just a little bit too, too rough even. Um, but a nice soft washcloth and a nice towel and lukewarm water is what you're going to want to wash these guys off in. Not too much soap. And then the other thing you're going to have to have to remember is that most briars, uh, especially the traditional size, have a hole in their mouth or nose. Uh, that's an air hole. So when you bathe, you're going to want to stay away from that general area with, with water just in case so you don't get any in the hole. Another thing you can do is organize your shelves. I recently just got everybody unpacked and reorganized all my shelves. I've actually shifted some shelves around too, which was a little bit of a pain trying to figure out where everybody went again, but it, it was really good to get my cabinet refreshed. I moved my mini shelf up from the bottom. My stone shelf is here. Some of my minis that, um, like all my stone minis fit on this shelf. So all my stones are together in the same shelf for the most part, other than like a couple sentimental pieces. Uh, my customs and resins, my micros. I took the liberty of taking some minis off my shelf here and putting them with their big counterparts or ones that looked similar to each other. My deco shelf has been completely redone and everybody now fits there. So there is a lot of reorganizing you can do and you could even organize by, like I've, I've done organized by brand, organized by these guys are customs and resins. You could even go by color. This is basically my black and white shelf. Um, I like to do that sometimes with like organizing by color. But reorganizing your cabinet is a perfect thing to do right now. Another thing you can do is start or keep up your record book for your models. So like this is my record book that I can probably put a little link. I think it's going to be on this side. Um, but I can put a little link to the video that we did on record books before. But in your record book, you want to keep track of your inventory. So I actually haven't done mine in a while, so I could actually update my inventory. But that's my inventory, my show string, um, what everything costs me, what the value is of them now. And actually going through um, and sorting out class lists. I actually have to remove a couple class lists from shows that we've already done. And then uh, breed reference. My All of my breed reference cards are, for the most part, if they fit in here, they're in a pencil pouch. Otherwise, I have them either tucked into sleeves or right here at the front of my folder. See, some of them are just too big to fit in the pencil pouches. Um, and most shows let you have a maximum of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. But other times, you only need something like that. Also in my record book, I have my collectability information. Like this is from the Premier Club 2015, um, the sketches and the letter. I have lists of events and activities we've done, stuff that I purchased, stuff that I've sold. If you guys need a record book template, we'd be happy to get you ours. Um, you can email us at paintpointstudios at gmail.com and we'll send you a copy of our 4-H record book. Another thing is if you guys have been attending a lot of live shows lately, you can organize your ribbons. So I have these nifty accordion folders and this one's actually getting a little big, but I have accordion folders for my ribbons and NAN cards. So I have these labeled by horse name. And then I go through after a show and I take all of the winnings of a certain horse. I will put them in their respective category. And this is really helpful if you have a lot of show horses 
or if you have even a lot of man cards, it is really nice to be able to take everything out of your binder or wherever you keep your ribbons and stash them away in these folders. Plus then if you ever go to sell the horse, all of your winnings are kept safe and sound and right where you need to find them to send them to the new owner. Another thing you could do is tack making. Now I'm not really that experienced in tack making, but I do really like making halters. So I've actually um, taken the instructions from the Real Rondo halter making kit, which you can find, I think it's realrondo.com. Um, but this is just taking the instructions from the kit and using my own supplies, but also Real Rondo hardware and silver to make halters for certain horses. And this is just like a fine jewelry chain that you can use for a chain lead rope, or you can make your own cotton lead ropes with yarn or embroidery thread. Another kit that Rio Rondo has are their saddle, saddle kits. This is not one that I made, but I know for a fact that this is from the Rio Rondo saddle making kit, and this should fit most traditional horses. But if you haven't gotten into tack making at all, and you're, you really want to know where to start, I would recommend using one of those tack kits or also following some other tutorials here on YouTube. You can also do some prop making. So this is just a standard dowel cut to about, did we make these a foot? I think these are about a foot long and taped off. We taped off certain spots to stripe it. And then we also made some pots to match. So this is just some small floral, like a little floral arrangement that we grabbed at Michael's and a little terracotta garden pot. And we either use floral foam or like a Sculpey clay to stick the flowers in to make the pots. And the pots and the poles both match. So it's really fun if you, if you have a color for your barn to go through and make yourself some sets of poles and props that are actually themed to go along with your barn colors. Another thing you can work on is your performance scenes for when the next live show comes around. You can use felt as an actual base for these scenes instead of using you know, actual footing. But also you could make a mini scene on some of these little wood bases for your mini minis. And this is just, the snow is just a couple cotton balls. We have cardstock that's actually been sponge painted to make it look like ice and snow. And then one of the new unicorn mini minis and it's the perfect size and scale for a nice little scene. Cowboy Austin here is, is riding one of my horses tacked up in the halter that I made. We have a stable mate wagon that we have switched out the horse that came with it for a stone mule. So don't be afraid to like mix and match briar and stone, different props and also models. Another one that we haven't opened yet is this stable mates horsepower set which I'm really excited for. I kind of want to replace that stable mate in there with somebody else and see what, what, possibil what possibilities we can open up using this little kit, basically. And then Briar also has their, their performance props as well. So like this is the backcountry camping set that has tent, sleeping bag, blanket, and a couple other things for um, a cute little country camping performance scene. You can also take the time to research and make some breed cards while you're at it. Uh, breed cards are pretty much essential for live showing, especially if you want to document something that's a little bit out there or unusual. Now I typically do my breed cards so that they're anywhere from the full eight and a half by 11 allowed to, I think I have approximately some that are about this size, so about you know three by four, or four by three, whatever you decide you need. And you don't have to do them um, just like this either with a lot of writing or, or any of that sort. Sometimes all you need is a picture or a couple pictures. Like for this one, this is just used for me to describe a horse's particular color. Whereas some of these other ones are used for breed. And some you're gonna need more information than others. For an example, my Camarillo White Horse compared to my Nez Pierce card. You can also go through and make collectability information as well. 
you know, when the horse was made, what it was for, how many of them were made, et cetera, et cetera. Now, one thing that we're offering right now is a online photo show via Facebook. I know some of you guys might not have Facebook. It's okay to use your parents' Facebook to enter. Um, just ask their permission first is the big thing. But on our Facebook page right now, we are taking our class list for our spring fling show. And we are hosting a probably month long, however long it takes to finish this out, photo show. Uh, we started with thoroughbreds and standard breads earlier this week as, as of when I'm filming. And we still have plenty of classes to go. So there is a lot of time for you guys to get entries in. And we're not talking fancy photos either. Pull a horse off the shelf and snap a photo. All we need is the name, breed, gender, and a photo of your horse. So for now, Pony Pals, that's what I got for you to keep busy right now while we're all kind of stuck inside. But in the meantime, make sure you go check out our Facebook page and our Instagram. I'm trying to post updates to both as often as I can. And don't forget to enter our photo show. We are offering some prizes. We're placing classes first through third with first place getting a coupon code for $5 off of our website through, I don't even think we're offering an expiration date on those. So just $5 off our website. We're also currently running a 15% off sale through the entire month of March, as it is our fourth year anniversary of being in business. If you guys can't participate in the photo show or don't have any horses to participate with, that's okay. Go on to Facebook and just check out everybody's horses. We have gotten some really, really cool entries so far. And don't forget to keep updated on our YouTube channel here as well, as I'm still working on my 20 horses in 20 days project. All right, Pony Pals, next video is coming Thursday for the next segment of that particular um, project. In the meantime, I will see you in the next video. Bye.